Well, I've had the, uh, the again, the great pleasure and the honor today of um, doing a lot of radio interviews b- before I even came on the air. In fact, I did three uh, very major uh, programs and, and, and stations or around the nation. And uh, doing, I, and I do quite a few interviews. I'm very blessed to be able to do that, and uh, because of Freedom Friday, and because of PP Simmons News and Ministry Network, and my ministry as the senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church, and now, of course, the Lord has blessed me to write a couple of best-selling books, and I've been all over Christian TV and radio with that. So people people know me through that, and and they want my opinions and my input on on various matters. And so today, back to back to back this morning, I had very lengthy uh, three interviews. Uh, some of the uh, portion of the interview was about my latest book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, and the absolute Kaduri revival that it is causing in Israel. We'll talk about that in a moment. But some of it, of course, is about this fascination with the blood moons that are coming up. And uh, I, I, I know quite a bit about that. Uh, Pastor Mark Belt, who wrote the latest, greatest book on that, The Blood Moons, uh, I can't remember the subtitle, Discerning the Times or something like that, but it's, it's entitled The Blood Moons by Mark Belt, B-I-L-T-Z but you pronounce it belt. Um, he, uh, he is the uh, senior pastor of El Shaddai Ministries in Tacoma, Washington. But he wrote this book. He's, and the reason I'm mentioning him, he was, uh, he's scheduled to be on the show today. I don't know if he's going to make it or not, but it, it doesn't matter because I can talk about this very intelligently. I, the three interviews I did today, uh, everybody wants to know about this and because I am well studied in it. And I've produced a little video and put it on P.P. Simmons that went completely viral. People want to know about this. So I'm going I'm to give you you that information in a moment. If you want to call in and add your two cents worth or ask questions about it, please feel free. Uh, 623-1330, area code 850. Uh, but Pastor Mark Belt was the original discoverer of this phenomena, and as particularly as it relates to, now, you know, Scientists have been knowing about this. Astronomers have been knowing about it for you know for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, so he wasn't the discoverer of the phenomena, but he was the, the discoverer, the first to speak to the fact how these blood moons line up with biblical events. Amazing. Way back in 2008, he spoke to this on in a video format, which went viral. Uh, but then here recently, he's written a book about it, and it has become a best-selling book. So um, let let me just explain this whole phenomena because this is uh, extremely interesting. If if you don't know anything about it, and if you do know something about it, you may know more than I do, and or you might have a question. So uh, feel free to jump in if you want, or just kick back and listen. But here's here's the phenomena. Here's what it's about. A blood moon is nothing more than the moon appearing to be blood red, you know, or orangish. It has kind of a reddish-orange hue. That is the result of a lunar eclipse. Now, lunar eclipses are not um, rare phenomena. They, you know, they, they happen quite often. Uh, but, but what's got everybody all excited and what's got prophecy watchers kind of, you know, keeping their eyebrows raised right now is that... There is a phenomena among blood moons called a tetrad. That's a fancy word for four in a row. Four blood moons in a row. Two in one year and then two in the next year. So two consecutive years, there are four blood moons in a row. And what Mark Belts discovered is that quite, well, excuse me, not quite often, but rarely, and, and the way these things align is amazing, and I'll tell you about it, but every now and then, these tetrads, which are very rare, an even more rare thing happens, or rarer thing happens. And that is, these four blood moons line up perfectly with two feast days of the seven feasts of the Lord given to Israel in Leviticus 23. And when this tetrad of feast day blood moons lines up, it lines up like this. The first blood moon appears on Passover. That's in the spring. In fact, the first blood moon of this year is uh, 2014. Uh, excuse me, of course, this is 2014, April the, the 15th of this year. Now, this is the first time this has happened since 1967, so, so give heed to what I'm getting ready to say. As a matter of fact, it's the last time it will happen for another 100 years. So this tetrad of blood moons falling on these feast days is extremely rare. But now listen. So this April the 15th is the first blood moon of the four. The second blood moon of the four occurs in October of this year. 
which falls at the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the last feast. So Passover is the first of the seven feasts. Tabernacles is the last of the seven feasts. And as many of our listeners know, these feasts line up and correspond with the gospel message. I mean, they do. And they line up and correspond with the life and ministry of Jesus, the birth of the church, and the second coming of Jesus Christ perfectly. So a lot of people see huge significance in this. So the first blood moon occurs April 15th, all right, of this year, just a few days from now. The next one is in October of 2014 at the Feast of Tabernacles. The third blood moon in this tetrad occurs in April of 2015. Guess when? At Passover. You got it. The fourth blood moon of this tetrad appears in October of 2015. Guess when? You got it. Tabernacles. So, I know this is a little, it's better if I have a chalkboard or an overhead or something. You know, this is radio. I, I hope people driving down the road are going, what? <laughs> but, but hear me, hear me. Four blood moons, 2014 and 2015, Passover and Tabernacles, all four of them fall on feast days perfectly. This phenomena will not happen again for a hundred years. All right, now that's pretty exciting. What else is exciting is that since the birth of Jesus Christ till now, there have been only seven of these occurrences. So in 2,000 years, only seven times have there been a tetrad of blood moons lining up with the feast days. Now, you know, I, I am somewhat of, a, of an expert on this topic in that I've been in the ministry for 30 years. I've been studying the Feast of the Lord and preaching and teaching on them, producing videos and uh, writing about them and uh, writing about them in books. And uh, uh, my latest, my upcoming book, uh, which will come out at the last of this year or the beginning of the next year, uh, talks about are we living in the trumpet days of Revelation. We, I talk about the feast quite a bit in there. I've done a lot of studying on this blood moon phenomena ever since Mark Belts broke this information years ago. So, as I said, I've done three radio interviews on this today already, so I, I guess that qualifies me to be somewhat of an expert, but that doesn't mean that I don't have things to learn about this or that there are things that I don't know. So again, if you know something else about it, please call, and or if I'm confusing you and you have questions, please call. Uh, but in the meantime, let me jump back into the story. So so I've already told you what the blood moons mean, told you about the tetrads, and, and that I the last thing that I left off, I was telling you that between the time of the birth of Christ and now... That's been, let's just round it off and say 2,000 years. There have only been seven of these tetrads, these four blood moons in a row in two consecutive years that line up with the feast days, Passover and Tabernacle. And then the next year, Passover and Tabernacle. So there's four, okay? So this year, 2014 and then 2015, that is the, la the first tetrad we've had since 1967. We won't have another one for 100 years. But what's really cool, out of those seven several of them line up with very significant dates. Let's just talk about the last three, all right, before this tetrad. This is all the time we're going to have today. But the last three, we'll go back to 1492 was the third one from this tetrad. 1492, what happened then? Well, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> That's interesting. And America was founded, if you will, which became a haven for the Jews and a protection for the Jews, and eventually the United States of America was instrumental in bringing the nation of Israel back, 2,500-year-old prophecy, and protecting Israel ever since, and of course until this administration, but anyway, that's, an, that's another topic. Uh, so 1492 is huge. Also, that's the year the Spanish Inquisition uh, basically uh, crumbled and fell apart, and uh, uh, Jews left Spain, and, and the Inquisition stopped, and uh, that was huge because a lot of Jews were being put to death because they wouldn't convert to Christianity. So that huge date among the Jews, and all that happened in 1492, that was the year of the Tetrad, all right, falling on Passover and Tabernacles. Well, the next year that the Tetrad appeared, get this, 1948. Well, you know what happened in 1948? Israel was reborn. Reborn during a tetrad, blood moons. Then, the next tetrad that happened was in 1967. Well, you know, of course, that was the year that Jerusalem was captured by the Jews. And, I mean, that's biblical, that's historically huge. And it happened to occur during a tetrad, during the blood moons. Passover tabernacles, Passover tabernacles. Do you see a pattern here? 
tell you something else mathematically interesting. Now, everything I've told you is absolute fact. Okay. Now, you know, w- 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 what does this portend for this year and next year, which is the first blood moons we've had since 1967? I, I don't know. We'll speculate in a moment, okay? But right now, everything I'm telling you is fact. So that happened 1967. Now, now here's another interesting mathematical uh, connection. From 1948 to 1967, that's 19 years. So take write down those two numbers, 1, 9. Okay? From 1967 to 2014 is 48 years. Write down those two numbers. What are the four numbers? 1948. Well, that goes right back to the date of the birth of Israel. Now, interestingly, I I don't have them in front of me, but there are several other tetrads before the 1492 date that occurred in those seven between the birth of Christ and and uh, and um, you know today, when you do the spacing apart, it's 1948. So that number 1948 keeps showing up between the birth of Christ and the times in which we live now. It shows up several times in these tetrads. That mathematical oddity. The numbers 1948, 1948, 1948. And then, of course, one of the tetrads appeared in 1948, the rebirth of Israel. Now, again, all of that that I just said is fact. Now, you can speculate as if, you know, if that's just coincidence (laughs) or if there's something biblical and prophetic about that. People can speculate. So now people are watching this because this year, April 15th is the first blood moon of the Tetrad, the first Tetrad since 1967. And there will not be another one until 100 years from now. So what does it mean? Well, I, you know, I'm, I, I am not an alarmist. I'm not a, a um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, I, I, I don't hype uh, biblical stuff. I mean, I talk about biblical things. I love to talk about exciting biblical things. But I, I, I don't, I'm, not, I, I'm not a sensationalist. I don't say, this is that. I just say, look, let's think about this. Let's talk about this. Let's take the facts, the things we know, and then it's okay to biblically speculate. As long as we make it clear, we're just speculating. I do know that Joel chapter 2 says that in the last days, this is the one that talks about your old men will uh, dream dreams, your young men will have visions, your sons and daughters will prophesy, and the moon will turn to blood red. And it talks about just before the coming of the Lord. In Acts chapter 2, that passage is uh, reiterated. It's from Joel 2. Oh, goodness, there's Jesus talks about the last days. The moon will turn to blood red before his coming. Uh, the book of Revelation, the sixth seal, I think that's found in chapter 7, talks about the moon turning to blood red just before his return. Uh, we're living in very prophetic days. So some Bible prophecy uh, watchers and experts are, uh, you know, speculating, are, are we getting close to the return of the Lord? Well, yes, we are getting close to the return of the Lord, but some are actually saying it's going to happen this year or next year on one of the blood moons. Well, you know, that's a, that's a contextual, reasonable, logical, biblical speculation, but I'm not willing to set a day and a time. I'm not going to do that. I will speculate that something biblically big could happen. If it was going to happen on a tetrad of blood moons, this would certainly uh, qualify. Uh, uh, It could be that something big is going to happen with Israel again. You know, we might move into another biblically prophetic uh, event that ties to Israel. I don't know. It'll all be interesting to watch. It doesn't have to happen on April 15th, but according to how all of these things have folded out in the past, it would happen, I suppose, sometime this year and or next year. I know people saying, well, yeah, it gives yourself a lot of room. Well, first of all, hear me, folks. I'm not making any prophecy, so it doesn't give me any room at all. I'm just speculating with you based upon the facts. The facts are we have a tetrad coming. That's a fact. The facts are it's the first time since 1967 and won't happen for another 100 years. The facts are the last three have lined up with amazing biblical prophecy. 